So one thing with leadership is to own up your irresponsibility or your failure. Let me come to the presidential address. I mean, that was to me, that was out of point. I was expecting, Mr. President, there is no protest that has given such a long notice like this protest. And I was expecting the president to come out, let me give you this, on four things. Quickly, number one, my government, I have heard your cry, my government immediately will work on the subsidy, the reinstatement of the subsidy for the next six months. Why we fix the CNG um, kits and what have you, the convertible centers across the nation. That's number one point. I'm giving directions that in the next seven days, you can take me on on ABC. All right? On agriculture, I am instructing the Minister of Agriculture immediately to deploy all the instruments that are required. Number one, there are crops that you can grow them in one month. There are crops you can grow them in 60 days. There are crops you can grow them in 90 days. Cassava of 90 days. Rice of 90 days. Corn of 90 days. Apart from the vegetables. Apart from the land where we are having issues with security. There are still land where people can and cultivate not GMO uh, product but our real um, uh, agricultural um, pr plants or products mm. and so in the next in the next three months Nigerians you can take me up we're going to have this number of food supply I am instructing the the, the military and the armed forces to give a cover to farmers to protect them in the farms that is what we were expecting. I heard that uh, fertilizers were released. Sir, I, I bought 450 plots of land in the city of Jaws in order to distribute to families to farm this year. I bought a bag of fertilizer for 40,000. I never saw one fertilizer from the federal government. And they said two, 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 200 trucks. Did you see rice? I never saw any rice. I know nothing was there. All right. Okay. So let me let me come in, and and and, and this is really important. So uh, let me let okay, me. Okay. So let the me, last two. Yeah. Let, let me take you on the on the on the third one. The yeah. third one on the electricity tariff. This thing is biting hard on manufacturers and producers. And so what he needed to do is okay on the electricity tariff. We are withdrawing this tariff for this period of time until we get our acts together. Then we're going to implement the electric, electricity tariff. Number four. What the president needed to do was quickly to instruct the armed forces to act on the state of security and then say, okay, we want 100, 100 youths in every village, especially in the areas where we're having this insecurity issue. Because I want you to liaise with the 100, 100 youths to secure this territory. That's all the president needed to do. Then number five on my cabinet, I am going to reject this cabinet. 85% of the members of the cabinet are non-functional. They are just wasting right. the resources. Right. And the president needed to call down on the cost of governance for me as the president of Nigeria I'm cutting down on the total allowance 50% of my allowance it's not a poor man all right okay thank you so much I mean I, I thank you for I mean outline outlining your demands and stating clearly some of the quick wins that the protest is hoping that the president would respond to but I have two questions for you the first one is that um, you say that this president has plunged us into poverty but they would argue that it didn't start from now that they inherited a bad government and that right from the time of president muhammad buhari the enemy i said the the economy was plunged into where we are today and so they are just trying to mop up what they inherited what would you say to this especially sorry sir especially because you didn't protest during president buhari's time so why didn't you protest then when things were hard for nigerians and then in the first one year of the administration your protest and that's when the second aspect of the question is are you getting support from the christian community you are a lone voice at least at the moment in terms of but some people have said that oh if more christians and pastors spoke out like this then maybe we might see the change because they have the ears in some parts of the government they can speak to power directly what do you have to say about those things hi my name is Go. welcome to Future portal your unlimited access to supernatural and transformational content share messages on salvation redemption, solution, and deliverance. Please hit the subscribe button, like, and share this video. God bless you.
Uh, let, let, me, let me answer the second one. Um, that's the office of the prophet. Sometimes the prophet do not go with the multitude. Sometimes you know that you are passionate about the state of the people and you go all out. Whether you have the support or you don't have the support, you don't wait for it. You declare the stand. Now, let me come back on the issue of um, the president is just one so year. So you're getting support. So you're just you're working on your own. Oh, I'm getting support. Okay. I'm, I'm getting a massive. You can see the Christian. Are we looking forward to hearing more voices rise up? I trust God for that. Okay. No, right. this support is it in there. <laughs> No, no, no. In dollar terms. Nothing. Because nothing. we have some accounts. Nothing. I've been receiving. Not one. Not prayers. one. Naira. You can. They can check my account. My accounts are there. It's ah. all run by my family. Their accounts are there. Not one dime has come from are anybody. You mobilizing no. more Christian voices to come. I'm mobilizing more Christian voices and, and Muslim voices. Because right now I have a lot of sheikhs who have moved away from what they used to know and what they used to teach. Now they are ready to begin to teach the right thing. The affliction you see, the massive, let me use, response from the Almajiri is because of the wrong teachings some of the Islamic scholars gave. Oh, and okay. so now we are approaching that. Perfect. Okay. So the okay. First, the first now the first question. Um, of, uh, this administration. Uh, this administration. Saying that they inherited Let me say this to you: It's not Buhari's administration. The administration is, of Buhari is Buhari and Tinubu's administration. I can tell you that. Well, in the last eight years. Yes, the last because years. most some of the ministers you see. In there, we are given by Tinubu. Some of the parasatas were run by Tinubu. And remember, Tinubu was the, the leader of the party. That's why even in the second term, he came and said, this is the man. He went all out. This is the man that will fix the nation. So he's responsible for how He's responsible. And, and let me take you this. If you're a leader, if you're a leader and you are, you are eyeing a particular position and you want to take, even when you don't have it, you do your homework. I mean, it's open there for him to be able to know what's the state of the economy, for him to know the, the state of um, roads, for him to know the state of electricity, for him to know the state of, um, of, of security. And you plan, you sit down with think tank, men that would think through and bring out solution in number of days. Okay, Reverend Buba, I get you. But let me also be brutally honest with you. A lot of people will say, most of the things you said just now, Tinubu's speech addressed it. He talked about CNG. He said we're going to make 1 million CNG kits available. He also went further and he talked about, um, and I'm trying to be government spokesperson here, which is playing devil's advocate. He talked about agriculture. He said he was going to cultivate 10 million hectares of land. Last year he announced 500,000 hectares. This year he says we're going to cultivate 10 million hectares. That's secondly. Moving further, you talked about electricity tariff. The question I'll ask you, Reverend, is where are they going to get the money to pay from? In a country where we are using our crude to borrow money, it's that bad now. Where are they going to pay for electricity tariff that's going to the trillions, which they said was a problem for them and they can't carry that on their books? As we speak now, the government already has 120, 21 trillion in debts. You talked about rejigging the cabinet, yes, granted, I give you that. He could have quickly done that. Cutting the cost of government, yes, I give you that and all of that. But they will also argue that they are now taking a supplementary budget based on foreign exchange variations, and that's why they are bolstering the budget. So they are saying, we are doomed. You are saying they can do better. What's the argument here? Let, let me give you. When, yes, when, when, when did they promise that they were going to supply the CNG kits? No, that promise, uh, Reverend, in all fairness to you, it's been long. If I, the promise has been since the days of Wario. Okay, all right. Uh, the, the president has said five million. Okay, they, they promise you, let's assume that the president came on board and did what he did, the wrong policy that he threw to the Nigerian people and threw them out of balance. He made the promise, let's assume, in the month of uh, uh, June. This is now August 2024. Not one kit have we seen. No, they will also argue with you that they've seen some CNG. We haven't seen, sir. 
I mean, I advise this there's, government. There's a presidential initiative on CNG. No, sir. Some buses have been deployed. In fact, where they went to check some CNG buses that they were building in the plant in Lagos. Where and some other parts. Okay. Like we've yeah, heard of CNG, CNG use. You, 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 but we haven't, haven't seen anything in the law. We haven't, the, we haven't okay, seen anything. Seen anything and we haven't seen You're anything. Sure about that? Okay. All right. Now, now that those convertible kits are not something that are like aircraft engine that you will have to go and place an order. And recently they made a donation in Sokoto to some. Uh, public transport owners. Yes, Ma so what, what donation? I think, I think about a hundred or more than a hundred CNG kits for their buses. Well, well we have, a, I have told you this. I have gone, I traveled to the entire northern states. I went state by state. I haven't seen one. Okay. Now, this is over one year. These kits are not things that will take you less, more than, more than three months to import them and bring them into the country. It's nowhere. Now they said they are going to uh, the agricultural thing. You said how yes, many? They are going to cultivate ten million hectares of land. How many co um, uh, hectares of land have they cultivated since they've been in office? I just gave you that there are last year they announced five hundred thousand okay. hectares. Okay, okay. So did you see the five hundred uh, thousand hectares? Okay. Now you have you have you have you have plants you can plant in one month. Okay. You have corn you can grow in in sixty days. You have cassava. Okay. Cassava is the common okay. man's food. Prophet, I'm, I'm coming, Mister Ruben. Cassava is the common man's food that you can cultivate in 90 days now between then and now this government would have cultivated three times that would have flooded the market and crash hunger in this country okay prophet. so the, the fact is that promise is one thing doing is one thing prophet, so yes sir to summarize i know many prophets in the southern part of uh, nigeria it's a great privilege to meet you tell us who is Prophet Isa El Buba? And second, is this a Christian versus Muslim? Because Muslim Muslim ticket was a big issue in the uh, uh, lead up to the 2020 elections. Are you fighting Tunumbu because you are a Christian leader and you think Christians are being uh, unfairly treated? So is it Christian versus Muslim? No, not at all. Uh, uh, yes, in the first instance. Um, when uh, growing up to the to the to the elections, I was against it because I believe in equity, I believe in justice. Isa El Buba is the son of El Buba Sadiq. My father was a state man. My father fought and stood for humanity. He was in in Burma, laid down his life to secure humanity. My father came back as one of the most honored. Uh, royal officers and when he came back my father served this country and served it so well that we were not allowed to touch a dime of what belongs to government my father would rather allow us to suffer and he was an officer no, talk about yourself i'm talking about where i'm coming from because you know about me from where i'm coming from yeah. all right you know the character of the person from his foundation mm. that is el buba and i am a canuri to pray by tribe from my duguri, I'm a father of uh, sons and daughters. I'm a grandfather of eight grandchildren. And I'm the leader of the uh, prayer movement called Ebomi in Jaws and um, the convener of the initiative for a better and brighter Nigeria. I am a Nigerian, a Nigerian that want to see a Nigeria work. I believe in the new Nigeria. I believe that people need not to go through what they are going through right now. This country is extremely blessed. But I tell you, I tell you the truth. There are a class of elites that have bonded a covenant that they will not let this country rise. And I have a mandate. I have a mandate to make sure that this country ri uh, rises. For the past four years, I've not traveled to the United States. I've shut down my trips. I've shut down my trips to Europe because I can't be preaching to people in foreign land about the greatness of the grace, grace of God and right in my country, things have been messed up. All right. Well, okay. thank, you thank you so you. very it's much, Prophet Isa El Buba. You. you brought the fire. Holy Ghost fire. You want to say what a prayer <laughs> for Nigeria? You. Yes, I, I will want to. I, I want every Nigerian to know that we have a hope. And all Nigerians, you know that nobody can heal a nation except you. Stand up and defend your right to know that this country belongs to you. Don't be intimidated by anybody. The time of change has come and we must all rise to protect our government and protect our institution. You, right. May the yes, Lord be with you. No, May are, the Lord bless you. Here, prophet. <laughs> <laughs> this Arise Station is non-partisan, non-religious. Non non we are completely neutral. It, but it will 
reminds you that the Muslims in, the, in this protest demanded for the prayers to be offered. And we prayed in, in Christian religion. And then on Friday, we prayed with the Muslims. Yeah, in the churches and the mosques. Right. But here, we are non-partisan, non-religious. Thank you Thank so you very much. much. Thank, Thank you for